One of the things I know too is like there's, there's parts I think that we all feel, or I'll talk to myself, there's parts that I feel ashamed for. And I think a lot of people feel like, well, I wish I didn't have this addiction or I wish I didn't have this anger issue or I wish I didn't have this like uh, avoidance issue or I wish I didn't have this like certain activity where I get triggered in a certain way. And we, we feel bad that we do these things. All right. And it seems like in IFS, you, rather than feeling ashamed that those things exist, you turn towards them, That's right. you get curious, and you thank them, That's which right. is totally opposite yes. of anything anybody would ever think. That's right. Could you talk a little bit about that shift from being, you're thanking your addiction, and yeah. like, what the heck is that about? Yeah, and we just finished a training at a place called High Watch, which is um, mm -hmm. the first 12-step uh, based, uh, what do you call it, Treat retreatment, treatment center, and, uh, yeah, I mean, the practitioners really tried it out. And okay. so if I were to work, which will work with one of your we can, are you, Yeah, we can work with me. You yeah. Have a, you have an addict part? Sure, sure, work sure. With? sure. I don't really, I have, I have addiction. I have, a, I, have a, I have a lot of striving energy. Yeah, let's do that. That'd be good. <laughs> okay. But yeah. let me finish the story. Yeah. So. By simply having people, and, and most of these people are in recovery, mm -hmm. and so by having them focus on their addict part and get curious about it rather than yeah. hate it or try to keep it locked up and ask the big question for protectors is ask this part what it's afraid would happen if it didn't do its job or didn't used to do its okay. job. And in answering that, you learn what it's protecting or what it was protecting. Wow, okay. And then we can say, oh, I get it now, and show it a lot of appreciation. Yeah. And then negotiate permission to go to what it protects. Okay. And then heal that, which is a whole other story about how we do that. Yeah. And then come back to it, and now it doesn't have that same impulse. Got it. Yeah. And so, and so uh, something is freed up or released. There's an energy that was, was held that now is free and the heart can open and life can be more expansive. Is that? Yeah. And, and this addict part now takes on an entirely different role. Cool. Yeah. It's cool. very cool. 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 But let's get to let's your... do it. Let's do it. All right. Um, so how do we... I have a few parts, but I'm, I'm happy also if you see something that I'm not seeing and that you want to no, work no, on. I'm, I'm good with your striving part. All right. So I'm, I'm here. Okay. So go, you have a sense of it. I have a sense of it, yeah. And see if you can find it in your body or around your body. I'm seeing energy in my hands. Like, I, like it's like a, um, it's an activity energy. Great. Yeah. And as you notice that energy in your hands, how do you feel toward it? Uh, I really, really appreciate it, and it drives me freaking crazy sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to ask the one who is driven crazy by it to give us a little space to just get to know it. Okay. And maybe we can help it calm down a little bit, but we mainly just want to get to know it. Okay. And see if that one will step out a little bit or relax. Okay. I can ask it to step apart, the parts that's frustrated with it. All right. Yeah. How do you feel toward it now? Uh, I'm curious. I've actually not ever really like looked into it in this kind of way. Okay. So let it know you're curious about it. Okay. And just ask what it wants you to know about itself. And don't think of the answer. Just wait and see what comes back from your hands. It says we're looking to make it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Stay with it. Okay. Yeah. I didn't heal it, but that wasn't it. <laughs> not right. <laughs> And ask it, what's it afraid will happen if it, does, it doesn't make it or if it doesn't push you to make it? What's it afraid will happen? Just ask it that question. It becomes irrelevant. It becomes this part. Becomes, I become irrelevant. You become irrelevant. I become irrelevant, yeah. So it's trying to make sure you're relevant somehow. I'm relevant and, I'm, and I survive. And you survive. Yeah. Okay. Like I, I survive and I'm relevant. Okay. So how do you feel toward this striving part now that you hear what it's protecting? I, I want to hear more. I'm curious to hear more. Okay. Um, so I'm going to ask it more about survival and making it and what okay. that means to it. Okay. Ask it, what it can, can it tell me more about what it yeah. means? Yeah, yeah. Um, 
it says you, you, this part is like we have, to, we have to prove our worth. Yeah. And we have to do something that would be uh, commendable to other people. Yeah, that would be like beyond the usual life. Got it. Like we can't, we have to do something that's like, yeah, not the usual. Okay. So ask it this. Ask if it protects or tries to take care of a part that does feel like you're not valuable. Oh, that's hard. <laughs> um, yes. Yes. And then ask if we could go to that part and heal it so it didn't feel that anymore. Would this one have to push so hard? Um, if that part was... Yeah, no, it, this would not be needed if that part felt differently. And if, if all that could happen, ask this one what it might like to do instead of this pushing all the time. If it was totally freed up. It's showing me um, running out in the, like, it's like running out in the woods. Uh -huh. like, um, so it's just showing me like jogging through the forest. All right, great. Um, in the town, yeah. And ask it how old it thinks you are. Yeah, I'm getting different. It, it, there's like, um, let me go back into it. The first number was 21, and then I was like, hold it, I think I'm younger than that. But that was what first showed up. In yeah, don't mind. think. Just wait okay. and see what comes. That's what first showed up. 21. Up. Yeah. Okay. So let it know you're a bit older than 21, and maybe when you were 21, it needed to do this for you. Mm-hmm but you don't need that quite as much now and see how it reacts. Tell it I can take care of myself now, is that a well, little if bit of... If that's true, you know, whatever you want to say to it about okay. how old you are now and see how it reacts. So 56 now and uh, we don't have to struggle in the same way we struggled before. We got that. I, and I how does it react to that? It's, cur it's, it's a little shocked it's like a little bit like uh, dismayed, mm -hmm. um, but it's open to hearing more. Okay. It still feels unwor un we're inherently unworthy, though. I, know, I yeah. get that. Okay. We haven't healed it yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So we do have some time, Soren, but this would be a choice point. Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Go for it? All right. Yeah. All right. So ask this part if it would allow us to go to the one it protects that does feel unworthy, so we could heal it. Sure, yes. And before we go there, just check and see if any other parts are afraid to let us do this in this context or in general. I mean, it's not like we're in front of a bunch of people or anything. No, not a bit. <laughs> um, we can always delete the tape. Yeah, yeah, it's open. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, um, it's kind of a raw um, place in me. Um, but where, where in your body or around your body? When I, I get the visual, it's like in my gut. Okay. And left of my uh, stomach. And how um, do you feel toward that part that feels so unworthy as you notice it there? I feel sad, actually. I mean, sad, I for sad for it? I feel sad for that part that he yeah. feels the way he feels and that he, do, he feels like he has to kind of achieve and produce and be relevant and do shit. That's like all that stuff. Like I feel, I feel somewhat sad towards that. So let him know. Let him know you have compassion for him and see how he reacts to that. He's, he appreciates that. And he also says, and it's, it's a scary world. Yeah. It's a really scary world. Yeah. Yeah. Let him know you get that his world is really scary. Mm -hmm. But ask if he trusts that you care about him right now. Uh, yeah, he does. Okay. All right. Then ask him to show you why his world is so scary. And you don't have to share what you get from him about it with us. 
just ask him to really let you get how bad things were back then. Everything. He just says, you never, things can be taken away at any time. Okay. Like the world changes in an instant and you can not have any money or you can not have physical health. You can, like things can be just be taken away. Yeah. Uh, and you can't control, there's a, um, yeah, things can be kind of taken from, from me at any time. Okay. And is he showing you why he believes that? See if where he's stuck in the past with that belief. I mean, there's some memories which I've been somewhat aware of when I was, you know, in my early 20s where I, I lived for about four years without paying rent and I, you know, traveled around and slept in tents and slept on cardboard and ate out of dumpsters on walk when I was doing walks and stuff. And there was like a survival energy that I yeah, had. that's right. Where I uh, didn't have a lot of resources and I was... Um, Part of me was enjoying it, but part of me was also like kind of at that, at a very survival lifestyle. Yeah, so that's the um, part we're with right now. Yeah, and he wants to not be, he doesn't want to be in that space again. Yeah, so tell him we're going to get him out of there. But see if he does feel now. Okay. <laughs> see if he does feel now that you really get how scary that was for him. Or if there's more he needs you to get about it. Yeah, he, part of what happened was there was this kind of environmental walk I did where we, we kind of survived in, this own, in our very kind of subsistent way. And then I came back to the U.S. and I didn't have, I didn't plan what was going to happen. And so there was like a, a wake-up call of like, um, how are you going to make money? How are you going to survive? And not having resources to kind of do what I take care of myself in the way that he felt like taking care of. So he felt very abandoned by me that I, I yeah. hadn't, I didn't like prepare. I didn't kind of think through a plan yeah. that um, I was like on my own like journey without really focusing on practicals. And I think he got, he got kind of like, I can't trust this guy can't trust this guy to take care of me. He's too on his own little whatever journey. Right. Yeah. So let him know you get that. And if it feels like you can do it sincerely, then just maybe apologize to him for abandoning him that way or letting other parts do that to him and see how he reacts. So I, so I, wasn't, so the, so I wasn't there for him in the way he needed me. Is That's that, right. Okay. That's the apology? That's the apology. Yeah, I didn't know how to comfort you and I didn't know how to be with you in that, in, in those times, I didn't know. Um, I apologize. I, I'm sorry. I'll just do it internally. Yeah. Okay. I can authentically apologize for for um, not tending to that um, safety needs that he That's had. Right. Yeah. How's he reacting? He appreciates that. Okay. I appreciate that. All right, Soren, so what I'd like you to do now is go into that time period and be with him in the way he needed somebody or the way he wanted you to be with him. Wow, okay. And just tell me when you're there with him. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that, but so I'm back in a moment. There's a visual I have in a moment of like, like I was not sure where I was going to sleep or what I was going to do. And I remember, you know, that experience of like, Oh, shit, I didn't prepare for this. I didn't plan for this. I yeah. should have kind of had a plan. And there was a part of him that's like kind of took control or I don't know. He, he, there was an injury in that moment. Yeah. And so I can, I can, I can be back in that experience with him and this feeling of like, shit, we don't have a place to go. Yeah. So right? you are back there with him. Yeah. There's an image of me. There, I'm a, there's a, image that's appearing in my mind of that moment. Yeah, um, so can you be with that young man? You, Soren, now. Now, okay. Can you be there with him in the way he needed somebody? I don't know. I, I can tell him that, yeah, I can, I can be with him. I, I don't know if I can take away his fear, but I can tell we're, him. We're not doing that yet. <laughs> okay. Just be with him. Just I can be with him. I be can with be with him in, the, in that 
you know. Yeah, we're anyone. there. I'm there with him in that moment. And how's he reacting to your being with him? He appreciates that there's somebody with him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying anything, but I'm there with him. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I'm telling him I see that it's really, really hard, and he wishes that there was a better plan. Yeah. And he wishes things would have been um, kind of like basic needs would have been thought through. Yeah, great. Yeah. And see if there is anything he needs you to do with him or for him back there before we take him to a good place. Or if he's just ready to leave with you. He, he says he has something to tell me. Okay. And... Um, It's, uh, it's uh, um, weird. Uh, I'm trying to get his, his phrase that right. Um, he says, um, I can't quite get it right. He says something about, um, I'm going to say it and it's not quite right, but it might take me a few. He says, you have to understand that what you perceive as weakness is your strength. That's right. And what you perceive as your failure is your success, and what you perceive as, um, yeah, that that there that that what I what I think is the um, that there's a, a vulnerability and a helplessness mm -hmm. that's actually um, a strength mm -hmm. that I haven't that I I, I want me from. to see that. That's yeah. right. What do you say to him about that? Um, I say thank you. That's great. Yeah, I, I definitely um, hear that. And see if he's ready now to leave that time and place with you and come to a... Safe and that, and that oh, a little bit more, he has something to say. <laughs> and that um, um, he says that being irrelevant is, is, uh, is irrelevance and irrelevant is not, it, it's not the point of anything. <laughs> Um, and he says you have to really, really discover that there is, um, that who you are expressing itself is, is enough. That's great. Like there's no, that relevance and irrelevance is, is, um, is not something you should attend to. So all that's coming from this part or is it coming from somewhere else? I don't know. As Just best I can, it's coming from, or should ask? Just ask, yeah. And when I asked the part again, he's like, I just want to be safe. Yeah, okay. So that, my guess is that's coming from a different source. Okay. That we can check in with a little bit later. He just says, I want to be safe. So would he like to leave that time and place with you now? Very much so. All right. So let's take him somewhere he'd enjoy. It could be your house with Cecily, or it could be a fantasy place of his beach. choice. The beach. The beach. Beach is very popular, yeah. <laughs> so take him to the beach. Okay. How's he like it? Loves it. It's great. Well, so tell him he never has to go back there. And you're going to take good care of him now in a way you didn't before. See how he reacts. He said, so what does that look like? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> so what can you commit to, Soren? Well, I think what, was, what, what, what he wants and what was missing was just witnessing and care. Yeah. And like, I hear you, it is scary. This yeah. was a scary moment. And he wanted, there's a, some part that wanted to feel like um, he was witnessed in that um, scary moment versus like him needing to now take control and constantly be working and achieving and doing shit. Yeah. And so I, I can commit to that, that I can acknowledge when there's, um, uh, when, when there's, a, there's fear or there's a need for safety that um, I, can, I can commit to being, acknowledging that. If that so makes just sense. see if that does it for him, if that's what he was asking for. Yeah, that's all he wants. Okay. He just wants, he wants that like, that w if, if there is fear of safety or there's fear of vulnerability or there's fear of something, that I'm just like, I hear you, I got this. And he doesn't get like overridden. Yeah. Um, so tell him we have hundreds of witnesses to this commitment, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all he wants. Okay. 
So given that, ask if now he's ready to unload, unload the feelings and beliefs he got back there, particularly the fear and terror and the... Do we, should we name them or should we just ask him if he's ready to release them? Just uh, ask him if he's ready to unload them. He would love to unload them. Okay. Yeah. And ask where he carries all that, in his body or on his body? He's showing me his belly. Okay. And it's ask like what really he like. Big. What? He's shown me his belly, but it's like belly is like very, very big. But he's yeah. showing me his belly, yeah. Ask what he'd like to give it all up to. Light, water, fire, wind, earth, anything else? Um, earth. Okay. So go ahead and set that up for him. And when he's Just ready, watch him put it in the earth or? Whatever, however he wants okay. to do it, yeah. Okay. Just let him do what feels right to him. Okay. To let it go into the earth. Okay. And do it until it's all gone. It's all out of his belly. Okay. I'm just imagining, yeah, that whole belly gets just kind of like sh thrown into this, these big rocks that I'm seeing. Great. And how does he feel without all that? Uh, he feels good. He feels really good. Good. He's at the beach and he's got a lighter belly and <laughs> uh, he feels good. And tell him if he'd like to now, he can invite qualities into his body he'd like to have and just see what comes into him. Um, he would like rest uh -huh. and he would like ease. Right. And he would like um, to be still. And that's coming in? Yeah. Yeah. So how does he confidence? See, huh? What and confidence? Yeah. And like and um, he like wholeness. Yeah. Yeah. And how does he seem now? Uh, he seems good. He seems like he's like he's bigger and he's more like when I look at his expression, he's a lot more alive in his face. That's great. Um, and before we stop, let's invite that pushing part to come in and check this out and see how he reacts. The striving part? Yeah, the striving part. <laughs> um, so he, the, the striving part spent all of his time, it feels like, like trying to protect and take care of this other part. And then once, it, once the game is a different game, he's a little bit not sure what to do. Yeah. So again, remember we asked him what he'd like to do, and I think it was running or... Yeah. So is that still something he, yeah. he's up for now? Yeah. So tell him he's free to do that if he wants. Sounds great. Okay. And great. does he need commitments from you too, or is he going to just do it? He can just do it. All right. Yeah, That's he great. can just do it. He likes activity. It was the... It was the um, constant activity that was hard. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and one last thing before we stop. Mm -hmm. So there was a point where you were getting all this really good advice somewhere mm -hmm. about irrelevance and things mm -hmm. like that. Do you remember that? Yeah. And so maybe ask whoever was t saying that to you to come closer so we can see who it is. <laughs> okay, I don't know who it is. All right, so ask whatever, who, the source of that. Yep. Come? Okay, um, I'll do my best. All right, guys, somebody was telling me all this advice. Um, it may not happen, but just see if somebody shows up. Okay, I, have an, I, there's, I don't have, a, I have an image of like a light. Yeah. Like it's like a light sun yeah. that kind of is in my awareness. Yeah. That... So that's what I'm seeing when I ask that question. Okay. So thank that light for coming. Mm -hmm. See if there's anything else it wants you to know. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Um, it wants me to know wholeness. And that wholeness uh, never, um, how does he say it? Wholeness either exists now or it never exists, or it's never possible. It's either here now or it's never possible. Mm -hmm. um, like there's, there's, no, there's no activity that can make me whole is kind of its main point. 
And does that make sense to you? So it makes sense to me. Yeah. So let it know. Thank it for that. Yeah. And ask it if it's a part or if it's something else. It feels very sunny. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what that. Um, but I hear what you're saying. So the, a part would be a part would be like it's a protecting something, and a and an essence would not be not necessarily. It could oh, be no, an okay. unburdened part, but. If, usually, if you ask these things, they'll say, they'll tell you. So, so are you a part or are you something else is the question? Yeah. He's like, I'm, <laughs> he says, I'm, the part said, or whatever says, I'm much bigger than a fucking part, he says. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess that's. That's only the kind of Kind of took it as an insult there, I, I know. Think. That's Sorry. The, that's only the, the second time I've ever heard one of these guides swear. Yeah, bigger fucking. Yeah. One, one swore at me one time. Yeah. So let them know we're, we're we sorry. We got you. We got you. Yeah, we're sorry that we insulted him, but... Yeah, I didn't mean to insult him. It's good to have him here. Yeah. All right, does that feel complete? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's hear it for Soren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, um, yeah, all right. <laughs> the only way I can do it is I forget where I am. I, I can't think about where I am. Now you were in that other world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, should we talk about what sure. happened? And I mainly, you know, I, um, my intention is just I would love for us all to learn more about what this is. And so I, I don't know if we can take questions from the audience or we can kind of bring up questions that you think would be useful, but um, I was a little, I'm like, I could kind of talk a little bit about it, but I was also like in my you own, were in it, own yeah. world. I'll, um, I'll map out what we did. Please. And then I'm happy to take questions or whatever. Uh, so we started with that pushing, striving part, yeah. which is a protector. And yeah. so I had you just get to know it and, and get the parts that didn't like it to give us space to yeah. appreciate how hard it works. Yeah to keep you safe and ask that magic question of ask what's it afraid would happen if it didn't do this job. Right. Which you can do on your own. If you want to go to a protector of yours, just ask that question and then you'll learn what it's protecting. Okay. And then we appreciated it for that and gave it some hope of a new role if it let us heal what it protects. Got it. And then asked for permission to go to what it protected. Yeah. Which was that young, yeah. young man. Yeah. Who uh, it was funny when you were describing it initially, uh -huh. you were really minimizing. This, it felt to me uh -huh. how much terror there was in that that uh -huh. time for you. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, yeah. So he was really stuck in a scary place. Yeah. And so I had you really witness that. Uh huh. And then and part of the healing of these exiles that was an exile is to first yeah connect with it, yeah. form a trusting relationship with him. Apologized to him for abandoning him. Yeah, which you know. Yeah, he took he took the apology well, and then ask for him to show you what happened and how bad it was. Yeah, and to witness that. To witness what happened where he's stuck in the past. Yeah, and I had you do that until he felt completely witnessed. Got it. And then I had you go in and do what we call a retrieval. So I had you go be with him in the way he needed somebody in the past. Yeah, and then take him to the beach, yeah. and, uh, and then once he trusted you were going to follow up, and he had his conditions for that, yeah. um, then he was open to unloading the feelings and beliefs he'd been carrying from that time, yeah. which we call burdens. Right. And so we unburdened him to, um, what was it? To, to the earth. To the earth, that's right. And once he you know, was unburdened, he said, well, almost always these parts say, I feel much lighter. And, yeah. and then we had him invite qualities in to replace the burdens. And, yeah. and then uh, that was a complete healing of that one. Yeah. And then we invited the protector to come back in and check it out and realize he didn't have to keep doing this and he yeah. could be a runner instead. Right, right. And uh, so that, 
it was just a beautiful, complete process. Well, because I, I, when I know every every part probably has its own needs, yeah. but like this part, like as soon as I was like, wow, that was really, really scary. That was really, really hard. Right. And and like that time when I had not prepared where I was going to live or stay, and we were like, kind of not quite homeless, but in a in a in a without a home situation. Yeah. Like as as long as I could tell him, like he that all that's all he wanted was like me acknowledging that that was scary really, was. really hard. Yeah, and like, wow, that was really, really scary. Yeah. And also, like, we don't have to be in that space anymore. And we, don't, we aren't in that space anymore. We aren't in space anymore. All right. So is, is that the healing moment where you're just actually witnessing what that part... That's the first step of the healing. you got to do the retrieval also, because they're literally stuck in those times. Yeah. So you have to get it out of where it's stuck in the past. Okay. And then you have to help it unload the stuff. Okay. So all of that goes into the healing of these. That was an exile. Yeah. Yeah. 